Hi guys, welcome to Tony's tutorial and today we are going to discuss a very small topic from the chapter Hip Complex Biomechanics and I promise you even though it is a simple chap topic, a very small topic, it is a bit confusing but need not worry, we are going to track it, crack it in one of the most simplest manner possible. Can you guess what the topic is? Okay, I will give you a hint. We have discussed angle of inclination. Now, this would be angle of torsion of the femur. Can you imagine, or can you just recollect what was angle of inclination which we discussed in the first chapter, coxa valga, coxa vara and so on. Can you just recollect that? Hmm? Any ideas? Yes. Um, angle of inclination is an angle passing through an angle made between an axis passing through the head and neck of the femur and the shaft of the femur. Longitude and axis through the shaft. This is, this is an axis passing through the head and neck and this is an axis passing through the shaft of the femur. This angle is known as the angle of inclination and we discussed two conditions coxa valga and coxa vara were increase in angulation and decrease in angulation. For more details of that just you have the same class in my playlist you can just view that and listen to that class. Now let us come back. Here we are going to discuss about angle of torsion. Angle of torsion of femur. Okay, what do you mean by angle of torsion of the femur? To define angle of torsion is defined as an angle. It is of course an angle made between two things. An angle should be made between two things. An angle made between axis through femoral condyle through femoral condyle and an axis through our same head and neck through head and neck head and neck so this is by definition an angle made between an axis through the femoral condyle and an axis through the head and neck of the femur for example let me draw this is the median and lateral femoral condyles and just above that you have the head and neck of the femur and let this be the head of the femur and this is the head and let this be the greater trochanter and so on and now if we draw an axis through the femoral condyles like this and an axis through the head and neck this angle is known as the angle of torsion need not worry about that we are going to discuss in one of the most simplest manner okay now here the confusion is this one you have the condyles in the lower part of the femur whereas the head is in the upper part now how is going to be how it is going to make an angle so the angle is see that this is the axis passing through the femoral condyle an axis piercing the femoral condyle like this so this will be here an axis through the head and neck is here now how can we relate this both so you have this axis passing through the femoral condyle uh, let us show with the scale now I am dragging it up like this, I am dragging it, dragging it, dragging it and bringing to the up top portion. This is the axis through here, okay. Now let us take it upwards, 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 upwards and here, place it here, right. Let us place it here. So this is the same thing that is passing through the condyles. For our understanding, we have taken it upwards, that's all. Now imagine this is the axis passing through the head and neck this pencil okay uh, let us show it like this let us show it like this now here you can see that there is an angle made here you can see that or like this here you can see that there is an angle made and that angle this angle that is existing here that angle is known as the angle of torsion of the femur. is it clear now so what we did is we did not do anything else we just dragged this like this and we got this angle of angulation here okay right over here okay and now you have this one passing through here now you see that it is making an angle that angle is known as the angle of torsion of the femur more clearly you can see it if you are looking the femoral condyles from top to down when you are looking the femoral condyles from top to down, let me take this fibula for reference. If this top end of the fibula is showing the lower end of the femur and if you are drawing that angle 
or if you are dragging that axis passing through the femoral condyles that will correspond over here like this see it will correspond over here like this now you see can I place it like this if I place it like this the head of the femur is exactly speaking about one centimeter above the axis this axis is corresponding to that condyle now you see it is just above this one here an angle is made that angle is known as angle of torsion of the femur now if you imagine uh, for the better understanding if our femur was inclined like this if our femur was tilted like this then there won't be an angle made or a negligible angle would have been only made then there won't be any angle of torsion would be zero now clearly understand angle of torsion is an angle made between an axis passing through the femoral condyle and an axis passing through the head and neck of the femur for our understanding we drag it like this and we make it over here like this clear like this and here you have an angle that angle is known as angle of angle of torsion now if we imagine uh, what is the situation over here what is the situation over here is our femur making an angle yes of course our head of the femur is making an angle and that angle is known as the and that angle is known as angle of torsion and usually the femur is antiverted usually our femur is having slight antiversion and that angle is for reference we take it as 10 to 20 degree so angle of torsion can be 10 to 20 degree our femur is slightly antiverted femur is slightly antiverted our femur is slightly antiverted and angle of uh, torsion can be taken as 10 to 20 degree clear okay now uh, this angle is about 15 degree in males angle of torsion is 15 degree in males whereas it is 18 degree in females these are the features that we are going to see angle of torsion is approximately 10 to 20 degree the range it can the femur is slightly antiverted 15 degree in male 18 degree in female now the angle of torsion is about 30 to 40 degree at birth it is about 30 to 40 degree at birth okay and decreases by age how much it decreases 1.5 degree it decreases about 1.5 degree by age until maturity skeletal maturity until skeletal maturity and um, this becomes finally this 10 to 20 degree range and finally it becomes that 10 to 20 degree range clear okay once again let us just go through the points that we have discussed angle of torsion is an angle made between an axis through the femoral condyle and an axis through the head and neck of the femur and it is usually 10 to 20 degree our femur is slightly antiverted that is why we have not zero degree here we have 10 to 20 degree here and it is 15 degree in males and 18 degree in females clear okay and it is 30 to 40 degree but birth it can decrease by age and decreases at to a rate of 1.5 degree per year until skeletal maturity and finally reaches the degree of 10 to 20 degree and one unique feature it is symmetrical between both limbs symmetrical between both limbs so if you have the right leg and left leg the angle of inclination is different but angle of torsion would be same between both the legs that is the difference from angle of inclination clear yes and uh, that is about the general introduction about angle of inclination just have a look at the following diagram for better clarity in angle of inclination here you can see the angle of torsion just have a look at the greater trochanter the lateral condyles and medial condyles shown in the dotted line the head of the femur the angle through the axis and the angle through the condyles so this is all about the angle of torsion and it is usually 15 to 20 degree let us come back i hope that with that complete uh, with the diagram over there you are clear more you have more clarity regarding the angle of in, angle of torsion now you have two conditions in femur which we should discuss one is known as the antiversion of the femur 
antiversion of femur okay the first condition is known as antiversion of the femur now we saw that this was our femoral condyle angle this was the angle that was made over here that is a normal angulation of 10 to 15 to 10 to 20 degree yes now if there is a condition in which the femur is tilted like this so that this angle over here increases that condition is known as antiversion so antiversion is a condition in which the angle of torsion increases more than 10 to 20 degree more correctly more than 15 degree or more than 18 degree in females so antiversion is a condition in which the angle of torsion of the femur increases more than 15 to 20 degree or 10 to 20 degree that is antiversion now like angle of inclination when we discuss there is a lot of changes that is going to happen when the femur is and uh, angle of there is angle of inclination like when then there is coxa barca similarly when here the femur is antiverted lot of changes are going to happen now let us imagine what are the changes can you just guess what are the biomechanical impairments that can happen because of this angle of incline angle of torsion or antiversion can you imagine yes let us discuss it together see here we have the femur here this is the normal antiverted position there is a 20 to 15 degree of angulation now when this angulation is increased the head of the femur will be tilting anteriorly but the acetabulum it cannot tilt anteriorly it will remain the same now you imagine this is the normal degree normal angulation this is it now if this is increasing upwards outwards anteriorly what happens a large portion of the femoral head remains outside the articular surface that means the articular surface gets exposed or the articular surface area decreases a large portion of the femoral head is outwards what can result in it can result in instability yes the first point is articular instability because a large proportion of the femoral head is tilted outwards or exposed outwards the second thing that is going to happen here what do you mean by that there we had an abductor muscle similarly you know that most of the abductor muscles is arising from the pubic pubic area pubic bone okay now you see that most of them are inserted into the back of the femur or the head of the femur and now you see uh, here what happens is the muscle starts from here now femur itself is tilted posteriorly so along with that the angle or the inclination of the muscles changes right you see that this is a condition and now it will get tilted like this see this is the condition and posteriorly when these muscles are attached what happens is this happens this tilts like this so uh, when it is tilted the muscles when this is tilted like this what happens the muscles also line of pull also gets tilted or line of the pull of muscles changes that decreases the momentum because momentum is what the perpendicular distance between the line of pull of the muscle and axis axis remains same here so that momentum decreases what happens when momentum decreases the efficiency of the muscle decreases so there is a large abductor torque that is remaining right the muscles are working in the stance phase to balance that torque so when large amount of torque is standing over there or remaining over there it can result in arthritis it can result in arthritis right and it can result in arthritis and other sort of impairment especially to the articulating surface so the changes are the first one is the first one is articular surface decreases articular surface decreases large portion of the femur head large portion is exposed is exposed large portion of the femoral head is exposed now what happens as a result of this as a result of this what happens as a result of this what happens the abductor muscle torque decreases abductor muscle decreases or efficiency of the abductor muscle decreases efficiency of the abductor muscle decreases that result in decrease in momentum and inefficiency of the muscles inefficiency of the muscle 
This can result in unbalanced, unbalanced torque, which produce condition like arthritis, which produces conditions like arthritis. And what happens here? There is a phenomenon that is occurring. You know that the mus the femur is tilted posteriorly. Okay. Now you have the anterior structures, which is I am showing with my hand. Okay. This is the capsular ligamentous structure. We studied earlier that in last class that anterior structures are strong. Anterior structures means hip joint capsule. That means which ligaments can you guess? Which are the two ligaments which are seen in anteriorly? One is the Y ligament. Can you guess what the other name of the Y ligament is? That is iliofemoral ligament and pubofemoral ligament. So these structures will pull the femur like this. See, it is tilted backwards and it is not advantageous to the body. So these structures will pull the muscles like this, pull the femur like this. What happens if it pulls the femur? Just look the downwards, down. The, this result in the tilt of the femur. That condition is known as medial femoral torsion or medial femoral torsion. Okay, what happens is that the femur itself will get it tilted medially. It, this won't happen to this degree it will only happen in a slight degree which cannot even be observed clinically or maybe observed but we cannot see uh, we cannot imagine it like this but for your understanding i'm showing it when this pulls like this the tilt occurs that is known as medial femoral torsion so uh, antiversion of the femoral femurs can result in the anterior structures pulling the femur medially to compensate the problem over here and that condition is known as medial femoral torsion where the shaft of the femur which itself will tilt medially and now this is a complete closed chain now if the shaft of the femur is tilted there can be change in the there can be change in the tibia also because it is connected together that can result in tibial torsion also. But what happens, body has a compensatory mechanism for in case of medial torsion, mostly there will be lateral tibial torsion. That is, when the femur is going for medial torsion, medial tilt, the tibia will go for lateral tilt. So this will be balanced. But in certain cases, when pathologically the antiversion is higher, that cannot be balanced. So that person can walk that person may walk like this with intoing. The person would be walking with intoing. That means the toe will be tilted uh, inside. Normally, this is the position of the leg. This will be tilted like this. So the person would walk like this. That can happen. Okay. And now, um, that may not be clinically significant in the persons. So you need not worry. So forget about that. Just remember about this thing. What is that? The medial femoral torsion can happen in antiversion of the femur. Okay? Now that's all about the antiversion of the femur. And the second condition would be the opposite of this, that is the retroversion of the femur. Retroversion of the femur. Retroversion of the femur. Retroversion. See the the pen is not working and there is no chance to get it because it is complete lockdown over here because of the corona and whatever it is the retroversion is a condition in which the retroversion is a condition in which you just imagine this is the this is our key point of observation what happens is that femoral cut comes like this so the angle of torsion which is normally 10 to 15 degree decreases and it comes like this that condition is known as retroversion or retroversion is a condition in which the angle of torsion decreases less than 10 degree okay now what happens in retroversion if in antiversion that was the problem in the retroversion there would be other problems the retroversion one of the major problem is this gets tilted like this so what happens is that there can be increased congruency or there can be an increased contact between the femoral that can also cause damage that can result in the damage to the labrum that can result in the damage to the hip joint labrum and what happens labral tear can occur along with that impingement of the structures can occur along with that impingement of the structures can occur see the changes are like this in a retroversion the femoral head itself is tilted posteriorly the femoral head itself is tilted posteriorly so that can result in conditions like uh, the glenoid labrum sorry not the glenoid labrum hip joint labrum will get 
till when will get compressed or the tear of the labrum can take place and as a result along with that this is having more concurrency if the more concurrency is problem less concurrency is also a problem more concurrency can result in impingement of the structures and here what happens is that there can be impingement see so the the problem was that less stability here the problem is stability may increase but impingement pain can arise can the person walk if he has pain? No, he cannot walk. If there is a pain, how can the person walk? So naturally what happens is that this person will adopt a position or this person will adopt a different position. And can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? Before that, just have a look at the diagram of antiversion and retroversion. Let us have a look at the antiversion, femur and neck antiversion, one more clear diagram. The grey diagram shown is the condyles and the, in the side we have seen, we have the diagram of a retroversion. And this is the in toeing which I explained earlier with regard to antiversion. See the normal one and the toe is kept inside to avoid the complications or problems arising. And the last diagram where we will be seeing the out toeing which is common in retroversion so as to prevent the impingement the toe is placed outward and the patient walks with such a gait. Yes by the above diagram that we saw uh, you have got an already understanding about antiversion and retroversion so let us see the last point over here in retroverted condition this is going to tilt um, this is going to tilt interiorly where what happens is that there is an impingement to compensate this if patient was walking with in toe here patient will walk with toe out they will turn the toe outward what happens when the toe is outward a compensatory changes take place in each joint then that will reduce a slight degree of pain in the hip joint so you see that when i am placing my leg in the neutral position this is that when I'm moving inward, this is going to tilt. When I'm moving outward, there is going to be less concurrency. So that will help in reducing the pain in the patient with the retroversion. So in retroverted person, patient will walk with the toe out. And in introverted, sorry, in antiverted case, sometimes person may walk with antiversion, sorry, toe inward. But what happens is that usually it is balanced in the, uh, balanced by the rotation in the tibia. That is for medial femoral torsion, there is a rotation in the tibia so you need not worry about this this much just understand angle of torsion is this angle and there is a condition known as antiversion which is the increase in angle that can produce a lot of changes and there is a condition known as retroversion that can produce the following changes with that we wind up antiversion and retroversion i hope that this have been very thorough for you if you have any doubts please be free to get in with my instagram profile and on, on directly contact me I will be either out for any host of help. And next chapter or next topic, next video, we will be discussing very important things like anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, etc. So stay tuned, kindly subscribe to my channel and be happy, stay blessed. Thank you.